Today begins a brand new era for the Austin Venom here in the Madden 09 Cupcake Franchise Rebuild. Welcome back everybody. We have some brand new rookies to debut today and a new look team as we get ready for the second year of Venom football. We made John Spangler the number one draft pick and now he is our starting quarterback as a rookie. He is out of Troy. And he comes in with a skill set that I think can provide some needed stability to our offense with 90 throw power and 85 throw accuracy. I'm very hopeful that with John Spangler and a few of the other additions, we can go and get our first victory in team history. Shane Dexter will become the number one wide receiver with 88 jumping, 84 catching, and 91 speed. He will get the ball basically as much as he can handle. And then defensively, the quarterback of the defense, inside linebacker, Daryl Easley, 81 speed, which is excellent for this era. There was nobody like Deion Jones at this time in the NFL. Daryl Easley, 81 speed, that's really good. Especially with his 86 tackling, he can rush the passer if necessary, 78 block shed. I don't see a weakness. I'm very hopeful about the team this year to show improvement, very noticeable improvement. A couple things pointed out from last episode, Elijah Jackson, I always forget to check out the carrying rating, 47, probably not going to cut it here at running back, that's not great, but I'm going to keep him in his role anyway, because his role was going to be receiving back, and whether he's at receiver or running back, he's just catching passes. But maybe it's kick returns that I should look for somebody with a bit better carrying. Because we're going to return a lot of kicks. Oh yeah, they do have Daryl Easley here as our backup for every lineman spot. So we will fix that as well. That was pointed out in the comments section. You guys always see something I miss. We will have Marcus O'Donnell handle the kicks. I normally don't like having starters do this. But... We're the Austin Venom. What choice do we have at this point? And at least he's not our number one. Now, some of you wanted to see the other quarterbacks that we could have selected from in this class. So we will take a look at the younger quarterbacks in the league and the players that I did not select, like Dennis Battle, who went a few picks later to San Francisco. Dennis Battle ended up with 77 speed, which would be nice, like... Ideally, I kind of wanted the quarterback with some dual threat capability because I just felt like having that extra option means so much when we're so limited as it is. 89 throw power, 79 throw accuracy. So battle, a little bit less accurate, a little bit faster, similar arm strength. Could have gone either way there depending on preference. Riddick Montana, 75. Very weak arm, though. I don't think 74 throw power would have done it for me. I think that his was labeled, like, just above average. I've got to get to know, like, the scaling in this game because they say certain things are above average or decent, and they're really not. Bo Daniels, 85 throw power, 80 throw accuracy. He's all right. What if we could have had a quarterback with 73 speed, really good elusiveness, trucking, stiff arm, 99 throw power and 90 throw accuracy. Could I have done a little bit better? Well, Jamarcus Russell was actually not in this draft class, so he wasn't actually an option. But hey, if you want to have Jamarcus Russell to rebuild in this game, go for it. There were a lot of running backs I had some interest in. It's one area we just did not get around to upgrading. RJ Burton, 87 speed. Everything here is at least okay. He can spin, he's got the truck, he's got 93 Excel. A lot of good stuff here for Burton. He would have been one of the ideal backs for building up this offense. I also had a lot of interest in... Where is he? I'll find him. BB Cross, where is he on here? We'll find him in a minute, but Avery Ball was another option we had. He had the speed, 92, that checked out. So, very athletic game-changing speed and athleticism would have loved to have him on this team all right bb cross was only 66 overall but that includes a 93 speed rating his strength is very low oddly enough his elusiveness is also low alongside it 
He does have pretty good vision, which wouldn't really matter for us, user controlled. But 72 catching. So he's got some really high strengths and some really unfixable weaknesses at the same time. That's okay. I'm still really happy with our offseason overall, and I can't wait to see what we're able to do this year. I think that, you know, we have a chance to make Shane Dexter Rookie of the Year or John Spangler either one. We just got to put up some numbers this year, and we have a much better shot than last season. All right, we got some preseason games to go through quick. We start out with a 24-3 loss here to San Francisco. And John Spangler goes 9 of 16 with no interceptions. Geno Harris didn't put up bad numbers, though. 12 for 17. Those are decent. Roderick Moore, 66 yards. Elijah Jackson, 10 carries for 27 yards. He did fumble in this game, so that's kind of uh, the main concern. Clay Newton, 5 catches. Dexter had 4 with 1 drop. Drops are very common in this game. Nothing really notable here on defense, it appears. A few tackles for loss. I mean, that's always nice. Will Logan, a rookie, got a couple of those. Doing a little training here before we get to the actual games. Just made John Spangler speed a 67. Getting that up a little bit. Might try to get that into the low 70s for a little scrambling. Will Logan's getting some good development now. Brick wall defenders going up. I tried to upgrade Daryl Easley. I'm trying to work on that speed just a little bit. I'd love to see it get to 82, 83. It didn't work out this time. And Shane Dexter, we already got his spec catch up a little bit. These upgrades are going pretty well. Roderick Moore's speed is now an 85. We are still working on Will Logan. Looks like didn't get the training to work out on this round. And then Shane Dexter. Nothing more this time. Well, the preseason is now over. We did go 0-4, so we don't even have our first preseason victory yet. Here are the stats, though. I don't know why it defaults to defense. No touchdown passes yet. I was hoping to see John Spangler do a bit more here, and I was wondering like how the simulating would handle this team with the few upgrades we have and it's not enough to make a big difference at least in these four preseason games he played very similarly to Geno Harris on the ground meanwhile Roderick Moore's average is up to three and a half after averaging three yards a carry during the regular season last year Elijah Jackson only fumbled one time and there's no way to upgrade carrying through training in season. So it's something you just have to hope for at the end of the year. Clay Newton led the team in catches and yards, it appears. And only had one drop. And defensively, three sacks. Will Logan, seven tackles for loss. Maybe he's our preseason MVP, honestly. Daryl Easley had eight tackles for loss, 20 tackles. Landon Brickley had a 40-yard interception return. And kicking, Logan Farr, two for three. We punted 36 times in the preseason. And that would be, how much more than the next team? Just 10. By my count, we have 55 players on the team, so I will be making the first cuts. And who won't make the final roster? We're going to start out here with 47 overall, Elvis Freeman. We will... Release him, and one more. Oh, I guess by roster minimums, you literally have to have 10 offensive linemen in this game. NFL teams usually have 8, sometimes 9, so I guess I have to cut somebody else, I guess? Alright, we're going to release Heath Mathis then. We can have 4 corners on the roster. They had these weird restrictions here. I don't really like having roster minimums in place, but... That takes care of that. I'm ready for week one. The Austin Venom are now a 70 overall football team, and we open the newest season against the Chicago Bears, still in search of our first win in team history. I don't know if we're gonna find it this year, but I know we have a much better shot. I'm really excited about this season, and we're going to get underway and see if it truly is a brand new era. Oh my, 426 Dion Daniels from Ohio State. We're starting to scout once again. 
I can't wait to keep adding talent. On the road in Chicago, year two with the Venom is now underway, everybody. Year one was pretty tough, and I expect this season will be very difficult as well. But perhaps we'll see some serious improvement on this team on our road to our very first victory. We're going to kick. Normally I just receive because who cares? Let's get the football. But we'll start on defense, and we'll see what's in store. It's a new year, everybody. New possibilities and the chance to make a little history. Let's play some football here. It's Devin Hester on the return. Hester makes a man miss and is brought down at the 35-yard line. Chicago gets to work here, and we'll see if we can notice any improvements on defense where I obviously made only a couple moves. We added Logan, and we also have Easley now at linebacker. Montana playing safety as well. But obviously our early picks were spent on the offensive side. Rex Grossman gets the year underway. And this is caught on the outside. A big pickup here for Bennett. Into Venom territory. That sure did not take long. One thing to remember too is that Easley is a really good pass rusher. So he will be used as a blitzer quite often this year. First and ten. And over the middle. McKee makes the catch for about seven. Matt Forte deep in the backfield here. Montana down in the box as Forte gets the handoff and is denied. That was Max Pope, number 75, who had the stop on Forte. Back to pass. Grossman lobs downfield and it's knocked down. Venom get the stop. And the play was made by rookie safety Robert Montana. And the field goal is up and good. Chicago takes a 3-0 lead. But hey, we recovered after that huge catch by Earl Bennett. So to only allow three there is nice. Let's see now. This offense. High expectations in year two. We won our first victory. Let's go, everybody. Roderick Moore handles the kick return. Weaving through the middle across the 30-yard line. And it's time, everybody. The debut. John Spangler. What are we going to do with him this season? Can he top what Geno Harris did in the first year of Venom football? Oh, this Bears defense has some players that uh, might be a bit of an issue today. We're going to start things on the ground here. And Roderick Moore is brought down for the loss. Shane Dexter is number 83. Marcus O'Donnell, number 17. Dexter to the right side here. And second down and 13. Back to pass. And Dexter makes the catch. First throw in the career of John Spangler. It's good for one yard. So we're kind of headed in the wrong direction right now. Why do we have to get the Bears in week one? Did smart routes exist in this game? Can you smart route? You can. Cool. I don't think it worked. Whatever, I guess it doesn't actually work properly, or it does and doesn't update. Spangler is sacked. And it could be another long season by the looks of things. Don't worry, though. They're going to tell me what I should have done here, and I should have thrown it across the middle. Yeah, I saw it, but I uh, saw it late. I think this has been pointed out, but I wrote down a bunch of players' numbers here, and I think we have two players wearing two, uh, both 29. So I'll have to fix some numbers here. Hester makes the catch. What a throw by Rex Grossman, though. That had some real velocity on that one. I thought for sure that would at least get knocked down. All right, three receivers here for Grossman and the Bears. Grossman outside again for Earl Bennett. First down. Once again to the air. Grossman to the end zone. And it's knocked away by Denard Sloan. What a play. 
We already have a couple nice plays on the football here. Sloan is easily our best player. I think he's the best player on the team right now. Not just looking at ratings, but considering what they're doing on the field. They're going to toss it outside now. Can we contain? That would be a no! First down, Matt Forte. Bears trying to get to the end zone now. It's a first and 10 from the Austin 13. Here's Grossman throwing across the middle, and it's Devin Hester inside the five. Goal to go now at the two. It's Forte untouched up the middle, and the Venom just can't do anything about it. Touchdown, Bears. Well, already 10-0. I don't know if that first victory is coming today. I think that for us to get that win, we're going to need a game like that one late last year. I think it was against Dallas, where they couldn't really get much going in the first half. We kept it close, but how many points do we have to actually score to get our first win? I still think, like, under 20 seems impossible. I don't know how we hold the team to... 20 points or less. Here's Sylvester Truman on the reception as John Spangler has a gain of eight. I like to be balanced. I'd like to run the football. I just don't think it's going to work here against Chicago. We will get a first down though. That's Nelson. Boxes stacked once again. What's audible here? To the air we go, through the hands of Dexter. Come on, we have to catch the ball this year. I don't want the drops to be the same problem they were a year ago. O'Donnell and Dexter line up left. Here we are, Spangler across the middle and connecting with Marcus O'Donnell, that's a gain of seven. Come on, we gotta move the chains here. Third and three, it's Truman on the catch. First down, Venom on the move. And so far, Spangler's throwing a nice football for us. To the running game now, Nelson. That should be good for about three. All right, not a bad drive here. We can build upon something like this. Kendall getting snaps here at tight end on second down. And again trying to find Truman. That's incomplete. Third and seven here. Gotta consider at least this being four down territory. Elijah Jackson checks into the ball game now. And it's third down. Back to the air. Uh-oh. No! What happened? Spangler is intercepted! They had two defenders around O'Donnell, and this wouldn't have been an easy play, but how did that get picked off? All right, here's the EA backtrack now. And yeah, yeah, I see the double coverage. Here's what you should have done. Shane Dexter with the one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, I don't think I'm completing the pass there. Maybe if I am a little bit more patient. I actually had some protection on that play. But here it is one more time. This ball is definitely out way too late. Shouldn't have thrown it. But O'Donnell had the best chance to catch it still. And it had this awkward deflection that got picked off. Come on, we got to get some stops here. We got to keep it close. We got a few first downs that drive. It's progress. A shot downfield now. And getting open is Desmond Clark. Oh, man. Another beautiful throw from Grossman. They're going to Matt Forte this time, bouncing it back to the weak side, and he's taken down at the 24-yard line. Crowding the line once again on second down. Grossman faces the rush, finds Marty Booker inside the 20. Bears continue to move with ease. Come on, we gotta hold the Bears to a field goal. Delayed to Forte, he's got some daylight. Taken down at the eight. Third and one for Chicago. Grossman throws quick, and that was exactly what we need the rush to do. Speed up the process, keep him out of the end zone. 
keep our 1.3% chance of winning alive. All right, I want to make sure we can start getting the ball to Shane Dexter. We made him a very early pick. I'm excited about what he brings to the offense. And no, it's jumped and almost picked off. Everything's still very much a work in progress with this team. Here's Spangler right back to the air again. Dodging pressure, extending the play. And he's going to keep it here. Spangler gets almost the first down. All right, third down and one. Just going with the power. Running, and Roderick Moore easily picks up a first down. I'm hoping that with this offensive line, that is not like... They're not good, but they're better than everything else on the team, pretty much. I'm hoping that we can start to have some balance between Spangler... Hopefully delivering the ball accurately. He has so far. And then we get some runs like this. We can work with that. We still don't have any kind of downfield passing game. I haven't really had the confidence to even experiment with it very much. But here on the outside. What? He just ran into the ball. To catch the ball, you first have to try to catch the ball. Third and five. We're going to roll right, throw right. Dexter has the first down. All right. A six-play drive again. We've had a couple get to six plays. That's how we're measuring progress here, all right? Here's a handoff and running room. Elijah Jackson inside the 25. His first career carry is a gain of 11. All right, we're driving here. We're making something happen. And we're going play action. Watch out! Spangler only loses one. You can't cancel play actions in this game either. You can only audible beforehand. Two minutes to go in the half now. We have a chance to cut into this lead. And the ball's out quick. Dexter has it. Picks up the first down. We're going to run some clock here. That's why I let it go to the two-minute warning. I don't want Chicago to have much time to answer whatever we're able to do. Let this clock run a little bit. It's not in too much of a hurry. And Nelson gets the carry now. He gets two. 11 yards to go for the Austin Venom. Trying to make this a one-score game again. Motion man, Shane Dexter here. We're getting out of trouble once again. And off balance, touchdown! What a throw! Oh, I was not sure that was going to work. John Spangler's first career touchdown is fantastic. One of the best plays in team history already. You've seen it. From Patrick Mahomes. You've seen it from Russell Wilson. And now, some magic made by John Spangler. Are you kidding me? There's no room out here. Defenders surround him. And he throws a dart. What a beautiful play. It certainly is a new era for Venom football. Now we just gotta keep this game close for as long as we can. What a drive. It's 13-7, though, and the Bears can certainly answer back. Hester in the slot. Can't get beat deep. A minute to go here for Rex Grossman. Grossman's got time. Throws across the middle, and there's Hester once again, who's been their top receiving target. Grossman right back to the air. Whoa, he sacked. What a rush. We're not used to that. We don't really get sacks on this team. So we're going to watch this back. This is Derek Barton. And this is just one of the most dominant plays I've seen, period. They're late here to try the cut block. And it just doesn't work whatsoever. He drops Grossman, knocks back the Bears eight yards. Let's take this to halftime. It took us a little while to get going here. Started slow. 
but can you feel things shifting a little bit? Grossman on the outside has Earl Bennett running away from the safety. Ah, oh, we just still don't have that great team speed. Like, that's what holds back the defense primarily, is just so many players in the 60s or 70s for speed. We're down to 30 seconds to go now. Chicago still has one timeout remaining. They need two, and Forte moves the chains, but they don't get much more. So they're running out of time here, and now use their last timeout. So if we stop them in bounds, we'll have a chance to uh, force a field goal attempt or something. Can we keep them from getting a first down? Grossman throws to the outside for Desmond Clark, and he's got the first down. From there, they'll have to probably spike it. They should have time, and they can kick a field goal. Let's see if they get set. Five seconds left, four, and they're going to run a play. Grossman throws complete, and the half is over. I thought they'd be set up for a spike. But the bad time management and everything here by the CPU keeps it a one-score game. We'll take it. Away we go in the second half, everybody. A 13-7 game. Austin is in it halfway through. And we've seen some pretty solid play from quarterback John Spangler. He did get his first interception out of the way. But wow, we'll be talking about that touchdown pass. What a highlight play that was. Now, we have to do something else to follow it up. On the ground! What a hit on Roderick Moore. We're looking for that consistency on offense. We now head to the air. Protection holds up. And rolling with it. Ah, oh, there's just nowhere to go. On third down and nine, Spangler. Rolling outside to extend the play. He's going to heave one. Has a man open and he dropped it. Oh, no. Chris Clemens, what happened? Oh, he let him down. Oh, my. I can't believe that just happened, but it's the Austin Venom, so I should. We just extend it. I had no clue what to do. I thought about going right here, Dexter's way. But then, Clemens is wide open all alone. We should have had it, man. Still a six-point game, though, as Chicago takes over at their own 26. They should run the football more. They did a good job of that in the first half when they did do it. Matt Forte picks up seven. Second and three for Chicago. Grossman knocked down at the line and incomplete. We're starting to see some more plays being made, everybody. This is fun. Come on. Let's get off the field here. Let's force the punt. We got this. Do they give it to Forte on third and three? They certainly will. Forte won't get it. He's stuffed. Only a one-yard pickup. Looks like Leon Daniels was in on the stop. I think Remington Hunter as well. And this is still just a six-point game. All right, this should be returnable here. O'Donnell spins away from the first defender. We'll begin here at the 32. Isn't this fun? We have a real chance. Defense is making plays. Offense is starting to really show some potential. Let's run the ball on first down for a couple yards. We know Spangler can get the ball downfield. We saw it on that last drive. Here's Truman now on the catch, making it third and short. We're getting to the point where I might start thinking about some deep passes, but I don't want to get too ahead of myself there. We don't have a lot of great downfield threats. We'll see if Dexter can do it. But at the very least, we have a whole new level of play from John Spangler. Running on third down. Good job! First down, Venom to midfield. Roderick Moore giving us some solid play. Now some play action. Getting it away in time to Kendall. Breaking a tackle! 
That looked like it was going to be a sack, and we all of a sudden get nine. Second down run. And Moore is right at the sticks, and they give it to him. First down, Austin. 96 yards of offense now. It feels like it's a bit more. They are stacking the box here. Let's block Truman. Let's see on first down. We're going to take a shot here. Dexter open down at the one. Yes. Shane Dexter for 39 yards. Anytime they load the box like that in any game, I'm thinking about the deep ball. You got single coverage here. The beautiful thing is it's not even man-to-man -man here. He's not against Charles Tillman. The safety's got to get over, and he's just too slow to do it. And there's the catch. What a beautiful play. We're a yard away, everybody, from tying this game. Roderick Moore. Touchdown, Austin! We have officially tied the football game, everybody. I don't know that we've ever done this. But we're about to have a chance to take the lead. I feel like they're going to block this or something. The kick is good and Austin leads Chicago 14-13. We have our opening. We could be pulling off the upset of the century today. But we still have work to do. It's late third quarter. You know Chicago can still move the football against us. I don't know why they're in their goal line personnel, but they're going to run Forte, and he'll get nothing. What a beautiful play by Percy Chapman. Grossman's gotten the ball downfield a couple times against us. Could they go for a big play? Grossman to the outside. There's Desmond Clark for a first down. They've had a lot of success going his way. They fake to Forte, throw the ball to Marty Booker, and he picks up the first down. So here's Chicago, looking to answer. They're already on the edge of field goal range. I'm guessing their kicker in this era was Robbie Gold, so he's probably just not going to miss whatever they attempt. Rex Grossman trying to get things settled in here. Desmond Clark, the motion man. There's Forte. Fighting through contact, but still getting nothing. That's Remington Hunter. We're bringing easily on this play. I want to blitz him a lot this season. McKee the motion, man. Let's shift everybody right. Fake the forte. Wide open McKee. First down and more. Leon Daniels stops him at the 20-yard line. 36 seconds to go in the third quarter. Forte gets it once again. I'm impressed with a lot of our tackling today. Like, Forte had a few good carries to open, but in the second half, we're certainly winning that battle. Bennett and Booker, the wide receivers. Offset backfield behind Rex Grossman. Closing out the third quarter. Toss to Forte. Speed to the edge. First down. Matt Forte to the six. And we'll head to the fourth quarter. Come on, load the box here. Two receivers on the field for Chicago. We're bringing the house on this one. And it's Forte. No, it's a fake. McKee to the goal line. Touchdown, Chicago. Second catch of the possession, and the Bears are back in front. Great call there against the eight-man pressure. Now this is key. The Bears are going for two. I think we're just... Uh, going to bring some pressure here. I'm anticipating maybe a run, maybe more play action though. 22 personnel. Only one receiver in the ball game. They fake the die. Flip it. Forte is not coming close. That play just doesn't work. Well, they haven't scored in the 20s yet. This is our ball game if we want it. We have two touchdown drives. Can we find a third? Marcus O'Donnell takes us out to the 34-yard line. We'll begin again. We'll start this drive. A fullback dive here. Kendall gets a couple. So far, I do like the connection between Spangler and Dexter. We'll bring him in motion once again on second down. And at the feet of O'Donnell, it's incomplete. 
Chicago's gotten plenty of pressure. Fortunately, we've handled it quite well. This is one of those critical plays we've just got to find a way to convert. Third and seven. Jackson in the ball game will have him block. Three on the rush. Rolling outside. No one is open. Oh, he was out of bounds. I can't throw it to L1. He was going to be open. <sighs> Looks like we have to go get a stop. Or just go for it. Oh, man. I think I'll trust the defense right now. Not sure if this is a good idea. Probably the last time we can afford to punt today. Hester, good tackle at the 23. Defense needs to give us a stop here. Six minutes to go in the ball game. Greg Olson, the motion man. And they're going to Matt Forte. Big hole up the left side. And a huge hit delivered by McDaniel. But not until Forte gets the first down. More motion on first down. Forte gets it again. Wants to cut back and fights through two defenders. Getting two yards. Going to the 4-6 defense that this team made famous. Not covering Forte. Can I remember how to fix the coverage? It, it's so weird how you do the audibles there. But it's Booker on the outside and he should have a first down. Or maybe not. We don't have any choice but to get aggressive here and try to make the stop. If they're throwing, it could be bad news for us. But I'm anticipating Matt Forte on third and inches. It will be Grossman. Downfield for Booker! He breaks a tackle and he's off to the races! Touchdown, Chicago! He just burned Landon Brickley. You gotta make that tackle. And that could cost us the football game. Great call by Chicago. I was anticipating run, hoping they wouldn't throw it, and here it is one more time. The coverage isn't awful. But the 40 yards after the catch are. Well, it's going to take a miracle at this point, everybody. Down 12, and I don't see the Falcons on the opposing sidelines. So we're going to have to figure this out. Can we score quick? That's the question here. It's not over if we score quick. But, you know, moving quick is not our game. It hasn't been before. So first and 10, 420 left to go. On the outside, no! Picked off, intended for Dexter. And that might be it, everybody. Inside the 15, and breaking tackles all the way to the end zone. Chicago gets a pick six. Ah, oh, Nathan Vasher, one of my favorite players from this Chicago era. Tried to throw this with anticipation. And Vasher just reacts perfectly. Well, it doesn't look like we're getting that first win today, but we've certainly seen some tremendous progress out of this team. Got to get that ball out a bit quicker. We made it interesting. This is easily the most interesting game we've played in the entire series. It's still going to be a very tough uphill climb. Denard Sloan's in the game right now, so that's always uh, interesting that we have our cornerback out there. Uh-oh, no escaping the pressure. Things are getting a little out of control now. 3 sacks now for Ogunlie, and we find ourselves facing a third and 32. What do you do here? Might as well motion out Jackson, see if we can find an opening downfield. Gotta keep an eye on the rush. We'll just find Dexter, but he'll lose the ball. Forte gets it again, breaks another tackle, and Chicago gets the first down. Forte gets it again. Another first down, and he's not done there. Inside the 10. Matt Forte gets it again on third down and will not find the end zone. Chicago, our goal is to keep them from scoring 40. I like.
like to see us get together one more scoring drive if possible, but this was a much better performance. I know the scoreboard may not reflect that exactly, as Dexter has another nine yards here. But man, just consider... This was easily the closest we've ever come to a victory in this series, and we're currently losing by 22 points. I'm not saying it's like necessarily the the best uh, point differential or margin of defeats. Maybe it is. I don't remember what the closest game was a year ago, but we were in it for so long, and then things get a little out of control. They get a touchdown. They get a pick six. It happens. But we were in it. In the third quarter, we had a shot. Come on, Clemens. You got to start making plays. Knocked down. Ooh, that was a nice throw. I don't know how he does that. That's some serious arm strength. Fourth down and four. Over the middle. We're not finished yet. Complete. And that is Clay Newton. 46 seconds to go. We still have a timeout. We'll see if we have uh, a need to use it. Trying to look downfield again. And open! O'Donnell inside the 25. Let's use the timeout there. Trying to get one more touchdown. And we're going to roll right and run it. Oh, no. We have to get back now. It was a gain of four. Really got to utilize the sideline there. All right, 20 seconds to go. Same play. I like this. Let's see if we can make this work. Go into the end zone. Dexter knocked down. Third down and six now for Austin. No one is open at all, and we'll get one more shot. All right, everybody, this could be it here. Fourth and six. Dexter in the end zone. That's knocked away again. And Chicago will hold on for a 36 to 14 victory. But that was certainly a lot more fun. It was a much more interesting game. We have a chance to go get that first victory this year. I don't know if it's going to happen, but today is a really good start towards getting it. We'll take that. We did not really lose the time of possession battle by that much, and that's been something that's just been very tough in the past. We just can't sustain drives and can't get stops. It was different today. John Spangler in his NFL debut, 15 to 30, a buck 48, a touchdown and two picks. The stats aren't great. They might not be great all season, but I saw so much more potential playing him at quarterback. Rex Grossman, I mean, we have to do a lot more to stop them. That just was a pretty bad performance by our secondary. Running the football, Forte, 92 yards on 20 carries. Moore had his moments, but this was a really bad matchup for us. So we had to become a bit more one-dimensional. That led Shane Dexter to go five catches, 63 yards. And then Sylvester Truman had four for 30 and the nice touchdown catch as well. O'Donnell, three for 34. And of course... Some very bad drops today. Defensively, Barton had the sack today. Chapman had a nice tackle for loss, but there weren't a lot of standouts for us. We had a few nice run stops, though. I felt like Remington Hunter made a few plays. That was still a really fun time. I think we're going to see a better team this year. We're showing some progress one game in. I'll be back again with the Venom soon, everybody, and we'll see more games. We'll get to some simulating, and we'll find out if that first win is on the way. Leave your thoughts down below in the comments section. I hope you had a good time today. Please leave a like and subscribe for more of the Austin Venom Madden 09 Cupcake franchise, and I will see you all next time. Have a great day.